This young man, named David, had had an exhausting day at work. But when he noticed an elderly lady board the crowded bus, he quickly offered her his seat without much thought. What she did next would change his life forever. David, a 23 year old, had just finished a long and grueling day working as a machine operator and a cleaner in a factory. As he arrived at the bus stop, he saw the bus pull in and quickly hopped on. He was lucky to spot an empty seat, as the buses were usually packed in the evenings. His entire body ached, and his harsh boss had taken out his frustrations on him as usual. David had been up since 5 a.m. and had barely had a moment to sit down all day. As he settled into his seat, no one paid him any attention. Everyone was engrossed in their phones or their own thoughts. David leaned back and began to reflect. He knew he couldn't keep up with this kind of labor for long, it would only burn him out. As he was deep in thought, the bus slowed to pick up a passenger, and an elderly woman stepped on. She looked so frail, and her steps were unsteady as she slowly made her way from the door into the bus. When she saw that all the seats were taken, she leaned against the window, clearly uncomfortable but with no other choice. In this city, no one seemed to care for anyone but themselves. As the bus moved, she winced in pain as her waist and knees began to ache. David looked up and noticed the old woman's struggle. He immediately felt compassion for her and called out, Hello, ma'am, he said kindly, you can have my seat. The old woman was initially shocked. She never imagined someone in this city could be so kind and considerate. She smiled at him and slowly made her way to the seat. David helped her sit down while he stood for the remainder of the journey. Three minutes later, David reached his bus stop and called out to the driver to slow down. As he was about to alight, the elderly woman's frail hand grabbed his jacket. He turned to her in surprise, and then he felt her fingers slip something into his pocket. There was no time to inquire about the note as the other passengers were already pushing him to move. David stepped off the bus, and it quickly zoomed off. It all felt surreal. Why would she put a note in his pocket? Maybe it was a thank you note, he thought. David reached into his pocket and pulled out the note. What he saw written on it made his mouth drop open. Scribbled on one side of the note was a street address, and on the other side was a five digit number that looked like a code. Together it read, 5 Elm Street, code, 88,687. David was baffled. What could this possibly mean? After thinking about it for a while, he folded the paper and put it back in his pocket, then headed home. He needed rest more than anything. Once home, David took a quick shower and tried to sleep, but no matter how hard he tried, he couldn't stop thinking about the old woman in the note. It was clearly an address, but could it be a trap? Unable to sleep, he tossed and turned, pondering what to do. The next day, David boarded the bus, hoping to see the old woman and ask her about the note, but she was nowhere to be seen. He looked for her again in the evening after work, but still, there was no sign of her. David was disappointed, and his confusion deepened as he wondered what message she was trying to convey. The note stayed on his mind for the next two days, his curiosity growing stronger. David decided to visit the address on his day off. Fridays were usually his day off, which he used for chores like laundry. But this Friday, David decided to visit the address to see for himself. He just hoped he wasn't walking into a trap. He boarded the same bus where he had met the old lady and headed to the address. After 35 minutes, the bus reached his destination. As soon as David got off, he was surprised to find no houses around, just a large, intimidating estate surrounded by gardens and trees. The entire area was peaceful and serene. David looked around, studying the environment for any signs of danger. When he felt safe, he approached the large gate. He knocked, but there was no response. This made sense because there was no gatehouse, and the mansion was too far from the gate for anyone to hear him. David then noticed a panel by the central lock. Opening it, he saw a small monitor with a keypad that required a security code. It suddenly hit him the security code was the five digit number on the note. David pulled out the note and typed in the code. Instantly, the gate opened, granting him access. He stepped into the large compound and saw a huge mansion nestled at the end of it. He walked towards it, determined to uncover the mystery. When he reached the front door, it was slightly ajar, and he gently pushed it open. As he stepped into the spacious living room, he saw something that shocked him to his core the very same old woman he had met on the bus, sitting on a sofa with a bright smile on her face. 
It was clear that she had been expecting him, and she seemed genuinely glad that he had shown up. David had many questions, and the woman introduced herself as Vivian. David was eager to know why she had led him there. First, Vivian thanked David for helping her on the bus. She explained that she had gone for a medical checkup that day and couldn't get a cab, which was why she had taken the bus. The old lady offered David a drink, but he wasn't interested, he just wanted to know why she had brought him there. Vivian cleared her throat, maintaining an air of suspense. David, on the other hand, felt uneasy and wished she would just get to the point. Finally, Vivian took a deep breath and explained that she needed a caretaker. She was sick, and at her age, she could barely manage the large house on her own. Her health was worsening daily, and she needed someone to take care of her. To show that she was serious, she disclosed the pay, and David was shocked, it was six times what he earned at his former job. This was a dream come true. Suddenly, all of David's worries seemed to disappear. He immediately accepted the job offer, and Vivian was pleased. Over the past four years, she had hired seven caretakers, most of them stole from her, while others grew tired of the job and left. But she knew she could trust David, who had proven himself to be a kind and compassionate soul. David asked for a few days to take care of some personal matters before starting work, and Vivian agreed. David stepped out of the mansion with mixed feelings. He thought about his new job and the challenges that would come with it. He wondered why an old woman would choose to live alone in such a big house. At the same time, Vivian seemed to be a cheerful and kind person, and he was sure he would enjoy the job. David went to the factory and submitted his resignation letter. His boss was shocked by his decision, but when he saw that David's mind was made up, he offered to double his pay. This shocked David, as his boss had belittled and yelled at him for years. It turned out that his boss had taken out his anger on David because he knew David needed the job and wouldn't quit, but he also knew that David was a hard worker who would be difficult to replace. However, David had already made up his mind and politely declined the offer. Two days later, David started work at Vivian's house. His job wasn't difficult, all he had to do was make breakfast for Vivian, ensure she took her medication, prepare her bath, do the laundry, and clean the house. After working for the day, David would grab a drink and watch his favorite TV show while Vivian took a nap. When she woke up, they would often sit and talk. Vivian was a storyteller, and she entertained David with tales of the past. David loved listening to her because of her profound wisdom. They would talk for hours, and then David would prepare dinner for her. He made sure everything was in order before calling it a day. David grew emotionally attached to Vivian, and her home became like a second home to him. He began to view taking care of Vivian not just as a job, but as a responsibility. Vivian loved scotch eggs, and David would make them for her every morning. He did everything she needed without complaint and was always polite and kind. As the days passed, Vivian became weaker. She could barely walk ten steps before becoming short of breath. David was always by her side to help her. He would read newspapers to her, and they would watch operas on TV. One morning, as David entered the sitting room with some pastries he had bought as a surprise for Vivian, he was shocked to see her struggling to breathe. It was a terrifying sight. In a panic, David grabbed the phone and dialed emergency services. Fifteen minutes later, an ambulance arrived, and they rushed Vivian to the hospital. She was put on several IV fluids, and the doctors prescribed some medication. David was relieved that he had come earlier that morning, it was sheer luck. He stood by Vivian's side, holding her hand and praying for her recovery. Twenty minutes later, Vivian woke up. She looked up at David and smiled, thanking him for being there for her. David insisted that he was just doing his job, but deep down, he knew it was more than that. Vivian was discharged that evening, and they took a cab home. Once home, David prepared scrambled eggs for her and helped her get into bed, making sure she was comfortable before bidding her good night. But the morning's incident still haunted him, and he didn't want to leave anything to chance. There were three spare bedrooms in the mansion, and he decided to sleep in one of them. Little did he know the consequences of that choice. A few minutes after midnight, David was awakened by a strange noise. He got up and checked on Vivian, but she was sound asleep. Satisfied, David headed back to his room, but to his surprise, he heard the noise again. This time, it sounded like someone was trying to pick a lock. But David dismissed the thought. The fence was high enough to deter intruders, and the gate was locked with a password, making it difficult to break in. 
David wasn't too worried and went back to bed. A few minutes later, he was awakened by a sharp scream. He jumped out of bed and ran to Vivian's room, where he saw a shocking scene. A masked man with a gun was demanding money and jewelry from Vivian. David's first thought was that Vivian was too frail to handle such trauma, and he quickly sprang into action. Having grown up doing physically demanding jobs, David's reflexes were sharp. He quickly disarmed the intruder, and the weapon fell to the ground. The intruder was shocked to see David, as he believed the old woman lived alone. He hadn't even seen David until he was disarmed. Realizing he needed to escape, the intruder pulled out a small knife and, before David could react, stabbed him in the stomach before jumping out the window. The knife was small, but the wound was serious, and David needed urgent medical care. When emergency services arrived, David was taken to the hospital. During his hospital stay, Vivian stayed by his bedside, showing unwavering loyalty. If David could take a knife for her, it meant he would do anything for her. The doctors treated his wounds, and when David was discharged, Vivian suggested he rest at home for a few days before returning to work. But David wouldn't hear of it, he couldn't leave her alone, not after what had happened. David resumed work and continued taking care of Vivian. They had many deep conversations, and Vivian learned about David's family. His father had passed away, and he only had his mother and a little sister, who lived in another city. His mother had been diagnosed with leukemia and needed a bone marrow transplant, but they didn't have enough money to cover the cost. When Vivian heard this, she assured David that everything would be fine. She told him he had a promising future and shouldn't worry. Over the next month, Vivian's health deteriorated further, and she was no longer responding to medication. David called an ambulance, and Vivian was admitted to the hospital. The doctors did everything they could, but her condition worsened. Despite the doctors seeing no hope, David didn't lose faith. He was a firm believer in miracles and couldn't afford to lose Vivian. They had built an unbreakable bond, and he begged her to fight for her life, holding her hand and urging her to stay strong. As Vivian lay in her hospital bed, too weak to move, she reflected on her life with deep gratitude. David had been one of the best people to come into her life in recent years, and she was thankful for the universe's gift during her final days. As dusk approached, Vivian again urged David to go home, but he refused. Vivian wanted him to return to his mother, but David insisted on staying by her side. His mother would be fine, but he needed to be there for Vivian. David stayed with her all night listening to her voice, which by now was barely a whisper. She kept thanking him for everything until she fell silent a few hours before dawn. At the same moment, the heart monitor stopped beeping. David screamed, refusing to believe what was happening. When the doctor came in, David begged him to resuscitate Vivian, but the doctor confirmed her passing at 4.20 a.m. As her body was prepared for burial, David was in shock. His benefactor had died, but worse, his dear friend had passed. He had come to love Vivian like the grandmother he never had. His heart raced, and he nearly had a heart attack. Tears streamed down his face as he trembled with grief. He cried so much that his eyes became sore, and he lost his voice. When he returned home, he couldn't sleep, wishing life wasn't so cruel. Moving on was hard, but he knew he had to. He spent three days indoors, grieving. His mother, who had heard the news, came to comfort him. A week later, Vivian was buried in a cemetery. David stared at the tombstone one last time. You will always be in my heart, David said softly. He returned home and started looking for a new job. A few weeks later, there was a knock on his door. Three men in expensive suits were standing outside. David was confused and slightly wary. One of them stepped forward, introducing himself as Vivian's attorney and then said the most shocking thing David had ever heard. Vivian had willed all her estates and business investments to him. David was in deep shock and thought it was a joke, but the attorney handed him a document. As David read through it, his mouth dropped open in disbelief. Vivian had been a millionaire with shares in top companies. She had built her wealth through hard work, starting her business when she was just 30 years old. She had never married and had put her energy into growing her empire. When she was 40, she started a foundation for children and supported several charities. A few weeks before her death, after David saved her life from the intruder, Vivian informed her attorney to pass her wealth on to David after her passing. David was now a millionaire. 
David was deeply touched and honored to have been blessed by Vivian just for taking care of her. Now, with his newfound wealth, David could afford his mother's surgery. He realized that his simple act of kindness, offering his seat to an elderly lady, had earned him a lifetime of riches. Have you ever given up your seat for someone in need? Share your stories in the comments. We hope you enjoyed this story. Turn on your notification button to enjoy more videos.